Now we will talk about a colligative property called osmotic pressure. One of the easiest ways to think about osmotic pressure is to consider we have a large container and in the middle of the container we have a semi-permeable membrane and this membrane will allow water to pass through but it will not allow solute to pass through. So in the case where we have pure water on each side, the water level on each side of the container will be equal. <clears throat> now what happens when we dissolve a solute in one side of the container? So now we have our container, we have in the middle our membrane, and on the left side we'll have our water, and on the right side we'll have water plus solute. Now what happens is we'll notice that once the solute dissolves that we will have a difference in the height of the liquids. Now what happens, what's happening is water is flowing through this semi-permeable membrane into the side of the container with the solute in it. <clears throat> now, this height difference right here, um, we'll designate it by this height difference, <clears throat> um, is going against gravity. Gravity is trying to make the two levels of liquid in the container equal, like in the first instance. But here, it is like we have a, say, piston sitting on top of the container with pure water, and we have a pressure being exerted, greater than atmospheric pressure, that is pushing the water through the semi-permeable membrane and raising the right side of the container. This pressure is called the osmotic pressure and is the pressure in addition to atmospheric pressure that's required to instigate this height difference. Now remember from the first semester, pressure is equal to force divided by the unit area. So the force is equal to pressure times the area. So there's a force <coughs> acting on the water on the right side because it's higher and that force from freshman physics is mass times the acceleration of gravity. So this would be the mass of the water times the acceleration of gravity. So <coughs> there's a force acting on the amount of water that's above the level in the other side <clears throat> and the osmotic pressure is required to overcome this force of gravity. Now the equation for osmotic pressure is fairly simple for an ideal solution and it is given as pi, pi is the symbol for osmotic pressure, is equal to the molarity of the solution times the ideal gas constant times the temperature. This is very similar to the ideal gas law that you learned in the first semester. P, or pi, osmotic pressure, is the pressure that would be required to raise the level of the other side of the water above the level of the left side. And it is um, a force, as we saw, 
due to the mass of the water and the acceleration of gravity. So water always flows from the dilute side to the concentrated side of a membrane. This also works for our cells in, say, our body. Say we have some kind of cell here. This is the cell. And we have, um, say, a blood cell. Make this a blood cell. And we have a certain concentration of solutes inside and outside the cell. If the concentrations differ, then water will flow from one side of the membrane to the other. So say the concentration inside the cell is less than outside the cell. Say we drank a bunch of salt water and so we have a bunch of salt in our blood absorbed from our intestines and now this solute concentration is high here in our blood so water always flows from the dilute to the concentrated side so now water would flow out of our cells into the blood trying to dilute the high concentration of salt so we actually dehydrate our cells so if you drink salt water you're actually dehydrating yourself another example say we have our cell and we have we get dehydrated out in the sun, so we go to the hospital and they give us an IV. What if they give us an IV of pure water? So now we have pure water being introduced into our blood, and so the solute concentration in our blood is low because we're introducing pure water, and so water always flows from the high concentration to the low concentration excuse me <laughs> always flows from the low concentration to the high concentration so water would flow into our cells and they would burst so our blood, blood, red blood cells would pop so when we get an IV we don't get pure water we get a saline solution that will equalize the solute concentration between our cells and our blood. So just to recap the equation to calculate the osmotic pressure is equal to the molarity of the solution times R, the ideal gas constant, times the temperature.